Hi guys, this is the advisor and welcome back to my channel. I have had several requests for, from people who know me as a DJ and would like to break out into the business of earning some money from being a DJ music selector. And I decided to so, say, okay, since there is, has been a number of queries, I am going to just make a post regarding that matter because I would like to help other music lovers out there to earn money. Now, I learned the very hard way by trials and errors, and I'm going to now pass it on so it can make our life easier for those upcoming DJs and music selectors who want to break off into the business. I have made a success of it, and hopefully there are others of you out there who might be able to do the same if you take my advice. Now, here is uh, the first thing I would ask you to do, or the hope that you would have, is a profound love of music. You have to actually love music to a great level, else you, you're, you're just not going to make it. You have to love, it's, some, it's one of those career that you have to actually love what you do. That's the only way you're going to do it right and do it your best. You have to play music as if you're not working, you're playing and having fun and earning money. All right? So if you have, have that love for music, um, they, have, they have this particular guy, though, who wrote me. Uh, no, it's a guy, a gentleman. What he did was that he went ahead and the first thing he did was to buy up a whole pile of equipment. He has the money, he's about to retire, and he decided that, hey, he, he, he loves music and he was going to start playing music. But what he decided to do initially was to just go ahead and just buy a whole pile of equipment. He bought some of the best equi equipment, including um, line array speakers, um, even tent and all the equipment you can think of, amplifiers and so on, special laptops to do music and all of that. And he have had those put down for about three years and hasn't got, gotten a gig, not a single gig. And uh, he thought that you, once you have the equipment and you know some music, you will just start getting gigs and earning money, but it's not that simple. To start earning money in this business, first of all, I, I need to say, you need one thing mainly, a laptop. A laptop that has um, preferably um, the DJ software and all the music that you will ever need to play. If your laptop is not good enough to hold on the wide selection of music you have, of course you can have an external hard drive. And while you, I would recommend an 8 gig um, memory on your laptop, four gigs can work. Yeah, so that will help you. And you have your DJ software on it. And basically, that's the main thing you need not to go out by starting by buying a whole pile of equipment. Of course, if you already have a mixer, a mixer is good, and a DJ controller, yes, those are all right. So and you can walk with those things when you're going. But, of course, laptop. Main thing you need to start. To start. Yes? And, of course, what you're going to have to do is to have the various wires and connections. You're going to need the wires like you're the, the, the one to plug into the um, earpiece of the um, laptop. And you're going to need a certain amount of... Um, RCA jacks uh, are the adapt RCA adapters for the smaller three mil uh, pins and so on. And once you have those and the various connections and splitters and your lap laptop, you are fine. As I say, DJ controller is not really a must, and the mixer is not really a must. But of course, carry a mic, have a mic, just in case. Yeah. But laptop, most important thing. Okay. Now, here is where you start to earn money. Uh, no, no, no. You don't, you're, you're not going to start by earning money. To, to get into the business of going to the stage where you can earn money, you need to know the type of... Um, first, you have to start by playing at small gigs. 
just small gigs, a little wedding anniversary here, a little birthday party there, a little fish fry, um, the, a little homecoming, just some small events because that is what leads you to the big money gigs. And when you're playing at those gigs, you're not going to play and, and ask for money necessarily because the most important thing you need is exposure. You need, for you to get to those big money, you need exposure. So you start by exposing yourself and you start out with the small things, you know? You start with the small gigs and you play them. But remember when you go there to play, you know, there are people there who will be listening to you, adults who will be listening to you, even if you're playing at a children's birthday party. You understand me? Know the type of music that you're going to play. And of course, if for the people, because most of the people who call me, they have already been DJing for some time. Some for up to several years. It's just that they have not been earning because they have are like in the shadow of another DJ and they just can't get the playtime or the exposure that they need. When you go as a one-man band, you get your exposure. And remember that different type of events call for different type of music. If you play the wrong type of music at an event, it can cause you to lose further bookings. For example, I mean, if you cannot play Calypso or other rude songs at a child's birthday party or at the 50th wedding anniversary of a married couple. Yeah, man, but, but that's just a broad way of looking at it. But of course, play it by ear because... Some old couples, you know, are frisky and would love to hear those. Remember that unless you have a, an illustrious reputation, a music selector is only as good as his last gig. You have to always play at your optimum best, you know? Which, which leads me to the next thing. Even if you are playing for free, play at your optimum best, okay? Bear in mind that people will be listening to you, even at children's party, you know? And this can result in further booking. Um, as, as for large venues, sometimes people know you and will know you as a music selector, but they don't know your caliber to that extent. Or they have people who have a higher caliber than you, and they say, pop by in the earlys and lick some early tune, you know, while, you know, the, the real... Um, the feature artists are not there yet and they will be coming on at the prime part of the event and they say come on go there and lick the music even for free because here is what what you are getting you know you are getting something that you cannot pay for otherwise so even if they say come and play music for free go and play the music for free here is what you are getting exposure and the exposure you're getting, you know, is not so much for the crowd because you as an unknown, quote-unquote, unknown D DJ, they're not going to put you on the headline and they're not going to put you in the, uh, uh, at the time when the crowd is there. They're going to put you in the earliest before any patron even arrives. But even at that stage, play at your optimum best. Remember... The promoters of the event are going to be there. Or the representative of the promoter is going to be there. Other people are going to be there who will be listening and will be hearing what you're doing. And they are the ones who are going to then remember you and try to call you again and next time pay you. Or at least they will want to hear you again. So don't say, boy, the venue is empty, so I'm just going to... um. I'm just going to just play near anything because there's nobody here to listen. There are people there listening. The work crew who are fixing the venue, the people who are preparing the meals, the food, the caterers, the security, and the promoters, people will be there listening. And if you ever play into an empty venue, the venue is not really empty because ancillary staff who are fixing up the venue are there. Play your optimum best. Play for every single person. The gardener, the sweeper, everybody. The puss and the dog. Play your best. 
It has been said, you know, that you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And in terms of being a DJ, that is certainly true. Make your impression first time you go. And as, as far as impression, always arrive early. When I say arrive early, if the function officially starts at 6, you try to be there from 5. Try to give yourself at least an hour before the event starts. Here's the advantage of arriving early. You get to go, you're likely to be the first one to go on and play. And therefore, you might, you're likely to get a, 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 a longer play time. Because say there may be another selector or two at, at a big event. You may have another three or four selectors who are trying to get their a foothold in the business also. And another spin-off of coming early is that the promoters of the event will be on spot and will see you. And you get, uh, they will see you as you get into the thick of things. And they'll remember you. So, come early and, of course, be neatly dressed. Dress neatly. Well, uh, uh, of course, unless you play grunge or heavy metal or uh, music or that sort of thing, or play for other little fringe crowds, well, you, you, you know, well, that's different. But if you are really playing for decent people, dress decently. Dress neat, smell good, put on your best cologne, dress nicely and neatly, and look the part. Look professional, because being a DJ is a, is a profession like any other profession. So, look the part. And get yourself noticed. And how to get yourself noticed is, the, is, is you, you can create a jing, jingle. You know, the, a short little jingle, it must be, you know, and catchy. It, can, it should last maybe between maybe six to ten seconds. You don't need more than that. But should, you know, shout out your performance name once or twice and say something nice about you quite quickly and the jingle and then you go back to playing more music. And... You can um, play one jingle off of every four or five songs, you know. You can just have one, one jingle is fine, you know. But you can have up to six. Some people have up to six jing jingles. And you can intersperse them throughout the music, throughout the night, if you have a long play. But in the beginning, just one jingle is fine or two. Yeah, so don't, don't, don't too fussy about that. But have a jingle so that people hear the jingle and will... Um, remember your name, your stage name, your performance name. And once you do that, that helps your reputation to grow. And I can't repeat more. When you get to the turntable, play as if you are playing to a full house. The other advantages are that it helps to build confidence and it gains you the experience, the, the experience at, 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 of performing on the spot and helps you to iron out kings in your playlist on the fly. Because sometimes you're playing music, you know, not, there is no DJ or music selector who does make mistakes on the turntable while performing. You just happen to press the wrong button or click the mouse at a point and the music stops or the music starts speed up or slow down or something goes wrong. You must be able to in a split second be able to fix it or fix it or and put on another song or so on is with such speed that people doesn't even realize that you had made a mistake but that you had um actually were just nicing up the place in a smooth way so playing in front of a crowd and being able to iron out little kings if they occur is one of the things that playing that will gain you the sort of experience that you need. Another thing that helps your repetition, you know, is to have some special shirts. You need to brand yourself. You are your own product. And as it, since you are your own product, you need a brand. So once you have that brand, which of course is in your jingle, you're going to have a logo. And that logo you, um, is going to be go on your... You're going to get... A couple, maybe two or three polo shirts, or if not polo shirts, Oxford shirts, and you're going to brand and put your small logo over your left breast. 
and so that when people see you, so you look really professional like you have been in the business for 10, 20 years. People love people who look professional. Turn up early, turn up needs, well-branded, and play like you're playing at the Grand Palladium. Right? And those things will push you. You will be called back above the others. And there's a simple thing, you know. There's, there's one more sim sim simple thing I need to tell people, and it's this. Make some business cards. Work with even a dozen business cards when you're going out to play. And people may look at you and say, oh, business cards, in this modern world, now, people don't really use business cards again. Business card is a bit passe. And it's true. But here is the thing about the business card. It's about the impression. Say, so, well, there are another five or six DJs behind you lining up to play. None of them will have a business card. So when you hand a person a business card, he's going to take the number and he's going to put it in his phone. And he's going to throw the business card away. Like, well, chances are he'll keep it. Chances are he'll go put it in his glove compartment. I'll put it somewhere where he won't remember. But the fact that you actually presented a business card, that first impression, even if him dash it away, he'll remember you, he'll remember your name, and you're likely to get called. So don't forget that. Make business cards. And mm -hmm. once you're playing, how, 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 how you will know who to give the cards to? While you're playing, watch the crowd. See, which, see who is rocking to your music. And those people who are rocking to your music, look out for them. You see, when they are, even while you have a set of music playing, you can leave from over the deck and you can go to a person and give them your card. But, but of course, you can wait till after your set is finished and somebody else takes the, the turntable. You can simply go down there and introduce yourself and say, this is my card. You'll be surprised to know you is out a dozen calls. You're going to get two or three calls out of it. Because once these people are rocking and you see the grooving to your music, believe me, you are in their pocket. Or they are in your pocket, rather. And you are likely to be remembered and to be called. So those are very important. Another thing. Don't take every gig that comes to you. When your re repetition starts building, don't take every gig that, that is offered to you. There are certain gigs that you should turn down. Turn down any gig that you don't think you are prepared for. When I say prepared for, for example, suppose you are not a jazz man and it's a jazz function and you haven't got a large jazz playlist, or, you know, you haven't got a, a set -all playlist. You're not into Kiss, you're not into um, Iron Maiden, and that kind of thing. If you go there, you're going to mess up. So no, when you, when, when, when you are recommended, when people ask if you want to come and play at a gig, you let them know playing, I do not specialize Find out from them, of course, what type of event it is. And if they say it's a type of event where you know you don't like those music and you don't have the... Um, once you don't like that type of music, it's unlikely that you'll play it with the sort of enthusiast, enthusiasm and gutso that would re be required to make a DJ really function. You have to be into what you're doing, 100% into it. Because if you're not playing right, if, if, if you don't love what you're playing, you're not going to play it right. And people going to just pick up. And you're going to flop. So if you think this is music that you don't like, don't go up there. And that is what event call for. Don't play them. Don't go. So those are events that you turn down because you make go there and you make a money, yes, but here's what, you have lost your reputation and nobody calls you back because it's not that you're not a good selector. You're a good selector, just not for that type of music. It's just like, for example, you have, remember, you know, you have doctors, you have 10 doctors and they're all doctors, they're well-trained. But one is specializing ear, nose and throat, 
One specialize in bone, one specialize in cancer, one specialize in different, different things. It's not that any uh, is less um, competent in their area, but each of them have a speciality. For example, I specialize in 70s and 80s soul, reggae, disco, calypso. Having said that, I play about 15 different genres very, very, very well. But you have your niche. Just like a doctor, he trains generally. But because you go to an ear, nose and throat doctor and he can't fix your bones properly, you're going to say he's not a, he's not a doctor. He's a doctor, but he, he, doctors have specialized areas. And no DJ on the face of this earth is going to specialize in every single genre of music known to mankind. Therefore, know your niche and stick in it and give your best performance in surrounding the music that you love. Now, I'm going to be making another video about how to charge per gig. Because it, different, it differs in different countries and for different events uh, and so on. So leave a comment on whatever information you, you would be interested in getting. And I'll try and include it in my next how to video of breaking out as a selector. And if you want specific information, just make a comment below or get in touch with me and I'll give it to you because I want you to be and be as successful as a DJ, as a music selector, as myself. Okay, guys? So like, share, leave a comment below. And um, I look forward to seeing my next video. Thank you for listening.